Bilingua is is a gateway to Ethna um, for new listeners who don't necessarily know uh, the strength of the tradition that, from which she comes um, and also maybe don't know about her composition. Um, but it's a gateway to her because I think immediately the first thing with Ethna is the, the voice. There's a quality of, of tone and of delivery and a purity and, and you know, there are many things, uh, many words used to describe Ethna's voice. but the, the, the first thing that hits you is the voice and so the voice opens the, the door to the world of her imagination and her arrangements and her melodic um, compositions. What the album tells me about Ethna is that she's complex. Like you definitely sense that there are like many parts to her as a person that she's gentle I don't know I never met her but it you know so that you would say that she's gentle at times uh, sad um, intelligent and I think there's an air of even though she's not like screaming and roaring from the, ra the, the rooftops there's an air of defiance about it somewhere in there as well you know kind of of a she's kind of got a, a strength that's it's not pounding down the door, you know, but it's it's knocking. <laughs> it's knocking. It's gently knocking. She seems to have listened to singers and taken the look home down the artistic aspect of what they're doing, rather than the functional aspect. A lot of people treat sound functionally, but I think she fo focuses on it artistically. That's it was quite unique. Her approach is quite quite serious. The place goes silent and she starts to sing or starts to sing. I think Ethna as a singer came across as a very relaxed, very self-assured singer. She would have grown up with singing in her family and with an awareness of, of culture around her. And she had a very natural way of, of presenting a song. Generally good humoured, uh, her presentations were always self-effacing and I think she made she left the listener at ease with her voice. Uh, Tom Money described her one time as not a performer but as a singer, which I thought was very uh, insightful because that's what she did. She just focused on the song, not on the not on the on the voice as much. And I think that left it that the voice came across as very natural, very unassuming and a very um, effortless uh, performance at the in the end of the day. Bilinga was written at a time when Etna was going through um, an illness. We had been recorded, we had recorded tracks beforehand for various albums and this particular album was uh, based on Etna's creative uh, impulses and her uh, readings at the time. She was uh, reading to Celtic mythology, spirituality and many of the songs um, are derived from this period of her, of her experience. <laughs> This album wasn't released for 15 years uh, for a number of different reasons. Some contractual issues, Ethna had been signed to a major publishing company and she had been signed to a record label. And um, so the, the album had been brought to different record labels in the early stages who had made different uh, inquiries and different suggestions. Um, and with the passing of time and the pain of, of Ethna's death, uh, and the difficulty in, in uh, facing the reality of, of, of the album being there and, and not being able to release it uh, as a normal album would be, would be released in, in the way that the artist would then go and tour it and gig it and promote it. The suddenness of Etna's departure meant it left a big hole in me emotionally and musically. And working on the album, I just couldn't face into finishing it off. 
Donald was a great help. Donald did, took it on board and we went back in the studio and fixed some tracks that were nearly finished and um, pulled in the last um, uh, studio, studio musicians to finish it off and Donald did a fantastic contribution in that. And it was really, only for him I don't see we would have got it to the stage we have it. Ethna died in May of 1999 and that summer I had intended to travel um, to America or, or Australia possibly and uh, I decided I would, uh, I had taken up the offer from Mud Wallace of coming up to Randall Centre Homestead and spending some time in the studio and uh, doing some assistant engineering duties and during that time whenever we had downtime in the uh, in Mud's business um, we would take the opportunity to listen back to the tracks that, that Ethna had put down and uh, come up with some production ideas and taking it forward and, and putting down more instrumentation. And so for that summer, um, any downtime we had, we would do work on the album and I would um, put down some piano. We brought in John Fitzpatrick to lay down some uh, quartet string arrangements. Um, and we brought in Nicky Scott to put down some fretless bass. Um, and we, so we finished the, the recording over that summer and then started on the mix um, that autumn and mixed it um, in September, I believe, of 99. And uh, so the, the album was finished and mixed at that time and uh, has remained so ever since. I think this particular album will reflect Etna's creativity, the drive of her, of her imaginative approach to singing. Um, it'll give an understanding of her knowledge of a feeling and emotion, and yet a certain lightheartedness to her old approach in life, which she reflected very well. She carried her, her intellect and her creativity very lightly. So it's traditional in its 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 feel, yet it's contemporary in its feel. Um, it's uh, got a wide range of influences from Eastern European Balkan music to um, classical chamber quartet type feel in some some of the tracks to multi-layered vocal harmonising on sort of Scandinavian groups like Henning Garna's sort of uh, type of style. And there's um, Scandinavian fiddling feel to some of it. Uh, there's a very dancey feel to, to certain tracks, and then there's very dark sounding tracks. So there's a huge array of styles and sounds, and uh, it conveys a huge amount of emotion, um, uplifting, uh, dark, um, happy, sad. So it's 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 quite a roller coaster of, of sounds and emotions. <laughs> I think that's the exciting thing about the fact that the album is out now, that it will be reintroduced to a lot of people who genuinely won't know. And she is a bench, she is a, she's a benchmark, she's a reference point that should be in everybody, every singer. You know, every singer should know that she is a singer that you need to go back and listen to for many, many reasons, you know. After a wait of 15 years, um, some people say that a, a generation is 20 years, but a music generation is five years. So there have been three, maybe four music generations uh, have passed since uh, Bilingual was recorded and it finally getting released. And so um, there's the potential that you, you know, sounds become dated. Um, but I think the, the recording procedures and the techniques and the instrumentation and the arrangements um, have a timeless nature. And that's kind of a cliche thing to say, but um, I think they have a, a timeless quality in terms of the tones of the instruments, the playing of the instruments, 
and the arrangements uh, within the songs I think um, should uh, stand the test of time and I don't think it sounds any more aged now than it did when we, we completed the mix in 1999. Still innovative and it kind of can, it, it will be um, innovative forever I think because it's adventurous of her soul like you know to say things that she says and to sing in the way that she says which is like really like a knife through butter. So I think that she she was really innovative then how she, and it still sounds that way to me now so even though I think I think if I didn't know that 15 years had lapsed I wouldn't I wouldn't be aware of it it wouldn't be a relevant kind of thing to, to me as a listener anyway. I think the lesser will float away it's just very very dreamy music it's very you, you become involved with music it's just you, you get carried along on it and uh, like the strength of the stuff is such that a lot of people are singing say songs from uh, Senex Poor and that from the earlier from the La Lu, the La Lu productions they're singing songs that she sang and they assume that they're traditional very of course they're not their ethnos own uh, her own words or her own reworking of melodies so I think they'll, they'll, be, they'll be bringing away something which they believe is authentic but at the same time is very edgy and it's very new at the same time I think people will will hear an honesty in the singing and a musicality that's uh, that's that's not heard enough these days and I think anybody listening to this album and listening to it will mean for a pleasant surprise. The wind is high and cold, the sun.